Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lola and today I'm going to be looking at one to two star reviews of my all-time favorite books. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. I feel like I'm gonna get mad. Or maybe not. I'm not a very angry person, so maybe I'll just understand from the person's perspective. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the goal is basically for me to see how other people felt about my books um, and entertain. That's that's it. So <clears throat> first book we're gonna roast is Vicious by V. Schwab, which is one of the books that I read last year that got me back into reading after not reading for a very long time. I absolutely adored this book. I also loved its sequel. But we're just going to focus on Vicious and see what people didn't like about it. Okay, this I find interesting. Sorry, I just got, I just found a review from someone where they put two stars, but then they wrote underneath 1.75 stars. Storygraph lets you do like 0 0.5, 0 0.75 stars, which is one of the reasons why I prefer it over Goodreads. Um, but okay, they rated this 1.75 stars and they put two GIFs underneath it. Um... So they wrote, it's very short, they said, This wasn't for me. Essentially, the novel is a mixture of Death Note and X-Men. The plot is very interesting, but the pace was really, really slow. It picked up in the middle, then slowed back down, slowed back down after that. I was zoning in and out while listening to the audiobook. It took an effort to finish this novel. The ending was good, but it doesn't make up for the overall slow pacing of the novel. <laughs> How did they find it slow? <laughs> the chapters are literally like a page to three pages long. It's jumping between timelines. You're following different characters doing multiple different things at the same time. How do you find that slow? Like Vicious is one of the fastest paced books I've read. <laughs> okay, I mean, but that's the only thing they complained about. They gave it 1.75 stars because it was slow? They said that they liked the plot? What the fuck? How can you give us a book 1.75 stars just for the pace? I thought I was harsh when I rated books. No, this is just rude. This one says, Not sure why this book is so well rated. One of the few books I wanted to abandon because it was so tedious and predictable. A clone of flatliners slash heroes slash etc. that was written to appeal to the edgy YA crowd by adding in mature themes. Ending doesn't hold up well except to leave it open for a sequel which was conveniently advertised in the book. Um, alright, this one I can kind of understand, I guess, because when I started like doing YouTube again, my parents were like, ooh, give us some recommendations, and I recommended Vicious. Mind you, I'm also very well aware that my parents do not read the same books that I do, and I knew they probably wouldn't like it. Um, my dad is one of the ones who will branch out a little more and try things that he wouldn't usually read. But one of his complaints was that it was predictable. Which, again, I told him, I was like, you know how it's going to end. Like, you know what's going to happen at the end. The book's not trying to hide that from you. What it is trying to do is try to, like, piece things together from different timelines and show you what happened in between in a fast way, almost like a comic book type of way. Which is why this guy also makes a good point where he's like, it's a clone of other things. Like, yes, it is. It's a book that takes a lot of comic book ideas and puts it into a story with new characters, a different type of like magic system, I guess, or like x-men-esque type of world um and then the person saying that it was written to appeal to the edgy ya crowd by adding in mature themes i do not agree because here's the thing is that at least in my opinion from what i've read of ya vicious had nothing similar to ya in my opinion it didn't have angsty teens it didn't have some chosen one type of thing going on or stupid relationships in it. Like it was literally quite mature. Two best friends who want to kill each other. Like 
not much of a YA thing going on in there, so I disagree with that. <clears throat> and the ending doesn't hold up well. I don't know what they mean by that. They didn't, you know, they didn't talk that much about it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. It's okay. It's okay. You cannot like my favorite book. That's okay. I think you're wrong, but that's okay. And it's so funny because that person said, like, I don't understand how this book is so well regarded. Why it has so many positive reviews. It's not, and I'm literally scrolling through, like, so many five-star <laughs> ratings. Um, I did find this one, though. It's very short. One star. It's just predictable and lame as hell. That's all they had to say. We're going to move on to the next one, which is The Mask of Mirrors. This one, I know I'm going to find probably a few negative reviews on. Just because it's a pretty dense book and the way that it, like, world builds is not very explicit. It's not very familiar. The magic is also kind of hidden. Like, you don't really understand it very well until around the end of the book and even then like it's just pretty mysterious and kind of um I don't even know the word to use I have it in my head but I don't, I don't anyways there's also a lot of characters some of the characters are not very likable some of them are just you don't really know how to feel about them even our main character can sometimes be a little frustrating but I love the book so yeah I feel like I'm in the minority honestly, with this book. Also, it's not very popular, and there's probably a reason for that. Well, look at that! The first review! <laughs> Two stars! It's highest I can give it. It's just boring and a slog to get through. Yeah, that's something I kind of expected would come up. It is slow, but I loved it. But you know what? The slowness of the book really built up kind of the atmosphere of it all because it's it's venetian and it's elegant and it's a, like the magic has to do with dreams and with alchemy and with i don't know like i guess the slowness of it kind of adds to what the world is and even the people like it's very manipulative and just tiny acts of things here and there so yeah uh you know i guess if you don't like that then you don't like that all right, the, the reviews for this one aren't overwhelmingly glowing, but there are a few. Oh, okay, here we go. We've got another two star. Uh, two star. Uh, the plot, a long con mixed with political intrigue, yep, is entertaining and the Venice-like setting is fun, lending plenty of ambiance. Sadly, the authors fell into the trap that too many fantasy writers do, use of an overly complicated naming convention for people, places, dates, and times as a substitute for world building or character development. Okay. Yes, the naming of things in this book is a little complicated, but to be fair, at the beginning of the book, it does explain kind of how to pronounce certain things, and it's really not hard once you get into it. But then again, I was really immersed in the book and I was interested in learning it. So, I mean, that's kind of like if people started shitting on Lord of the Rings for its elven language. It's like, well, you might hate it, but a fan might love it. Um, and then saying that the uh, author spent more time creating an overcomplicated naming convention as a substitute for world building and character development, I 100% disagree with. I disagree with that. Uh, the world building is practically non-existent. Excuse you? What little we do learn is often told in long, long, long exposition dumps, bringing the action to a screeching halt. Well, yeah, there isn't a lot of action. That's the point of the book, is that it's not an action-packed book. It's more of like a political manipulation type of book. The pacing wasn't even with entirely too long, much tell, and not enough show. I disagree! <laughs> I disagree. The magic system is not defined. That's true. The first book does not very well define the magic, and that's kind of part of the mystery. Despite it being everywhere. But that's part of the magic, is that it is everywhere, and not even the people themselves don't understand it. While I understand the use of pattern, the tarot-like card system, as a plot device, I wish the author spent less time describing each and every card and their multiple meanings, and more time developing the world and magic system. So again, like, the, I agree with the card thing. Like, I didn't quite understand the cards, and I didn't really care too much about what the card meanings were. 
But to the characters and to the world, it is important to know the cards because they have meaning. The main characters were mostly okay, if a bit superficial. Well, she's trying to con people, so she has to be. Uh, I do not have problems with a large cast of characters. I do take issue with them all being introduced at the same time. The character dump, along with the lack of page time for many of them, caused me to forget most of them. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Despite the exposition and character dumps, odd pacing, it took about 300 pages before things actually happened. <laughs> and needlessly fantastical naming convention, the author's writing style was pleasant, and you can glean the genesis of a truly interesting story. For me, the bones of a highly entertaining fantasy series is here. It needs some work in the execution. I may check out future books, but they won't be high on my priority list. Damn, you just fucking shit on my favorite book. <laughs> Um, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree, my guy. No. But once again, like, I know that it is a slower book. I know that not as many people are going to enjoy it or want to sit in that world for an extended period of time and spend time with the characters. And yes, this person is right. Not a lot happens at the beginning of the book and it does take a while for stuff to happen because it's building up the characters and it's building up the the world and kind of the underhanded things that are going on until finally shit breaks loose and basically our poor girl in her con ends up you know in a bigger mess but whatever <laughs> All right, this person says, this book read like an information manual. Every scene filled with mini info dumps. The authors clearly put a lot of work into the world building and left the characterization out shivering in the cold. <laughs> it is only through sheer determination that I finished this book. And I can only say that after reading the 672 excruciating pages of this multi POV book, I can't distinguish between the characters and I don't care about any of them. <laughs> This hurts my soul. This hurts me so much. No! I mean, at least this one didn't deny that they did build the world up. But he denied the characters. No, the characters were quite distinguishable. Come on, man. You can't do me like that. Honestly, though, I would say that I did prefer book two over book one, but I love them both, like the whole world and the, all the characters and everything. And like, I had to read book one to get to book two to feel the way that I feel about book two. So I will say that the characters get more attention in book two, but I disagree that they get no attention, that they're, I disagree that they're left out shivering in the cold in the first book. Oh my gosh. All right, let me move on to another book before I lose myself. Um, this one is a favorite of mine that I don't mention enough, but it is uh, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I do want to read more Grady Hendrix. I do want to read more horror in general, but this one, ah, oh man, I ate this one. I feel like, again, this one will not be too hard to find negative reviews because of some of the themes that are in the book, I could see people taking it the wrong way. You know how sometimes a lot of people will assume that just because an author wrote from the perspective of someone shitty, they think that the author is a shitty person. That's where I can see some criticisms coming in. Maybe also with like some of the pacing choices, like I, yeah, I could see some reviews that don't go well. Wow, look at that. That didn't take too long. I thought I'd try some horror. Not for me. I was hoping for over-the-top, almost farce-like. Instead, I got, despite it all, boring housewives, suburban life, and too frequently gross. Oh well, back to mysteries and thrillers I go. Yeah, if you are not a fan of horror, I wouldn't read this book. It was ex It had very extremely disturbing scenes. I like how they said too frequently gross too. Like that's, that's horror. It's supposed to make you, do you know? <laughs> it's supposed to make you not feel very good. Okay, here's a one star. It's in Spanish, I can't read it. Okay, one star, not in Spanish. 
I was fooled by the ambiguous author name and charming title slash cover. That's true. It does kind of have this like whimsical type of look to it. This, oh, geez. <laughs> this pile of crap was written by another white male author who abuses black and female bodies in graphic detail for entertainment. I saw that coming. I don't read books like that anymore. Shame on modern Mrs. Darcy for recommending this book so highly. Okay, I don't know who modern Mrs. Darcy is. Listen, I understand that white men have their privilege, but just because a white guy is writing a book in which he details a certain demographic in a certain way doesn't mean that that's what he believes in. And also, the whole thing about them saying that this white male author abusing black and female bodies in graphic detail for entertainment? Come on, dude. Like, you can't be saying that because you're accusing him of doing this just for the heck of it. What kind of horror are you reading? Because let me, let me tell you. Horror isn't going to, you know, split up like, oh, hey, let's let's only attack men now, white men. Let's only do shitty things to white men. Uh, monsters don't differentiate. Grady Hendrix talking about racism and showing the segregation in this book and also talking about and showing how white suburban women were living and how they were abused by their husbands, not physically necessarily, but emotionally and psychologically by them, and also by their own children. Like, that was a point that the author was making all through the lens of horror. The focus of the book was this black woman and this white woman and pointing out that she, that the white woman was also racist towards the black woman and pointing out that this white woman is severely depressed because of her situation and her husband not believing in her. Like, all those things was Grady Hendrix showing that to people. Not that he believes in it, and definitely not for fucking entertainment, not, like, for shits and giggles. I don't like this review. Fuck you. Okay, the other point, too, is when I see reviews that are going to jab at authors for making certain choices in their books when they have nothing to substantiate their argument about that person being either, you know, either homophobic or sexist or racist, then all you're doing is trying to make yourself look like a social justice warrior, but you have nothing to back yourself up. And I don't like that. I don't like it when people push an agenda onto something that they have no evidence means to have an agenda pushed on. I, whatever. I'm moving on. I'm done. <laughs> all right another one star review i wanted to like this book i thought i was going to but i was so enraged by the way the women were depicted in this book oh my god are you fucking kidding me so subservient and made to seem like they're less than that's the fucking point that is the point that is exactly why grady hendrix wrote it in this way is that he was pointing out that women during this time had no agency and our main character is fucking struggling with that oh my gosh <sighs> at one point i was so absolutely appalled by patricia and her ass of a husband yes he is an ass that i almost chucked the book at the wall yes that's the point it's supposed to make you mad it was so dismissive of domestic violence between partners also the point also literally showing you that domestic violence is one of the number one violences whatever violations that happen and nothing is done about it <sighs> it evoked very real very angry feelings from me that i just couldn't get with maybe you need to do some introspection my friend every every more than awful thing done by a man was just dismissed and excused do you not see the pattern here and it wasn't one of those eye-opening, everything changed in the end kind of book. Well, yeah, because in reality, nothing changes. What the fuck? How does no one fucking notice this? <laughs> everyone just kept on going. No, everyone just kept on keeping on. The plot itself was fine. Everything else was a hard pass for me. 
Oh my gosh. It's almost like books that challenge what you think and what your your conception of reality is. Everyone hates. It's like you can't be challenged. You can't be told something and have to see it in... <laughs> if Maybe if Grady Hendrix's book had been a nonfiction and had specifically said like, hey, this is how women were treated in the 90s and how women are still treated today. Maybe people would have received it better, but because he wrote it as a horror book, people are like, oh no, this is so terrible. Okay, I'm getting mad. These reviews are making me very mad. I should stop. <laughs> I understand if people get triggered by books, which is what that person was saying. They were triggered by it. But don't hate on the book if it triggers you. Also, a good book is going to trigger you. Personally, when I read Grady Hendrix's book, I was blown away by how angry I got, by how disgusted I was. And to me, when I was reading, I was like, this is a good horror book because it is making me feel so much of that rage and so much of these things that we repress. That to me is part of horror. It's trying to bring out those things that you don't notice are in you sometimes. But maybe that's a rant for another day when I start reading more horror, because I don't read a whole lot of it. <laughs> But uh, in a way, like, I don't know, horror can be used as a therapy. And you know what? I've learned that from watching Violet Prynne's channel. Like, she has a whole thing now called Scarapy. I highly recommend you go check out her channel if you do like horror and or are at least more interested in looking into it. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm going to stop here for these one star reviews of my favorite books because I'm getting heated. I'm also getting hungry, so I'm heated and hangry. That's not a good combination. If you like this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, yeah, let me know if you've ever read some reviews of your favorite books and just got really fucking mad. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. Bye.